Okay, so today we're going to learn about setting up a reflux. If we're doing a reflux, it's because we want to carry our reaction out at the boiling temperature of the solvent. So what we're going to try and do is boil our solvent, but not have it evaporate away, because otherwise our reaction is going to lose its solvent and bad things are going to start to happen. So to do that, we put our solvent into our flask. Usually you put lots of other ingredients in too, but I just want to demonstrate the concept, so I'm just going to use distilled water. So you add in your reagents, and then you want to set it up. The first and most important part of all of this is that your flask is securely clamped. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why this is important, but if you're going to securely clamp it, clamp it around the neck like so, and make sure that it's not going to fall out. And you can see that it's still free to rotate, but it's well held. The main reason that you have to have your clamp securely around your flask is because if in emergency you need to remove your flask from the heat, you don't want to have to put your hands onto the glass. It's much easier and much safer to be able to control your flask by holding the clamp because you can hold it at the far end where there's no heat source. Or if it were to catch fire, you can hold it well away from the flames, and thus you can remove it from the source of heat and avert a potentially dangerous accident. Next you'll see that I'm putting in boiling chips. A few boiling chips, five or six, that's loads. The reason we put boiling chips in is to ensure smooth boiling. If you don't put in the boiling chips, it'll start to bump and your solvent will fly everywhere. And it also could potentially break the glassware. Next, lower your flask into position. It's important that the heating mantle is cold at this point. You don't want to heat it up before you've got the condenser in, otherwise reagents and solvent are going to evaporate into the lab and that's going to be hazardous for you and for others. So clamp it securely, following the same method that we always follow. First get it in position, then tighten it so that it's at the right distance from the stand, and then finally tighten it so that it's at the right height on the stand. And by following that, you're not going to have excess strain on your glassware. And it's important not to strain your glassware, because if you do, it'll eventually crack or it'll fall. Next, put in your condenser and then apply the water. When you were setting up your distillation, the rule was in the bottom, out the top. That hasn't changed. So the water is going to go in the bottom adapter and out the top adapter. Be sure to support the joints when you're attaching the tubing, because you don't, again, want to place extra excess strain on your glassware. You don't want anything to crack, you don't want anything to break. So attach your glassware and now let's flow some water through. It's important to have the water flowing before you start the heat for obvious reasons. How much water do you need to have flowing through? The answer is less than you'd think. Water is a very effective absorber of heat. The specific heat capacity of water is really quite high compared to other solvents. So really just a trickle and not the Niagara Falls. There's no point in wasting water here. So let's turn on the tap and have a look at roughly how much water you're going to need. On goes the tap, make sure all the joints are connected. You don't want any drips, so just double check before you set the water flowing, and you really don't want to have it flowing too fast, because again, if it puts more pressure on those joints, you're more likely to spring a leak. And then, let's investigate. You can see really quite a slow flow of water, much less than you might think. Again, adjust it slightly, and that's perfect. It's a good idea to check back periodically because the water pressure can change. So you definitely don't want your water to stop. Now we can turn the heat on. So turn it on at the wall, turn it up to a reasonable level, 5, 6, 7, depends on the particular mantle in question, and make sure that the switch on the left is switched to 1 so that you're heating the right element inside it. If you heat the upper element, it's not going to work very effectively at all. After a while, when you finish with your reflux, then we're going to want to cool it down. So I've sped that bit up because there's no point in watching water boiling. So when we want it to cool down, the first thing we do is turn off the power, turn the heat down to zero, turn it off at the wall, and the next thing we can do is lift our flask that we've securely clamped out of the heating mantle. Again, it's really important that it's securely clamped so that it doesn't fall at this stage because if it does, that's likely to cause a relatively serious accident. And if you're using flammable solvents, it's also possible that it will cause a fire. Again, looking at this boss head, you can see that it's clamped around the clamp arm so that the clamp sits down into the boss head and so that even if that's slightly loose, it's not going to fall and accidentally uh, drop out of position. Again, you can see, if you look closely, as our flask cools down, eventually evaporation stops and the condenser stops dripping liquid down into the flask. You can also see the bumping granules are down in the bottom of that flask. They're essential. Don't forget them. Okay, so now it's time to disassemble it. And once we've got our reaction done, we can disassemble it and we can continue on with working up our reaction, putting it into another flask, adding things in to get back our product, and so on and so forth. So 
turn off the water, only turn off the water once your flask is cooled down, otherwise you risk solvents in the lab. Take out your condenser, tap it to make sure that any solvent that's still sitting in your condenser can flow back down into the flask, and then take your flask away and do whatever you're going to do with it. All right, that's all for this week. I hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, ask in the lab. If you have anything else, post it up on Moodle, post it in the comments below. That's all for now. Bye.